A very good afternoon to all the guests and dignitaries. With great joy and immense excitation, I feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to all of you for today's webinar on future of waste management, turning waste into energy, organized by Dizzy Saksham. I, Kanika Gar, welcome you all on behalf of Dizzy Saksham. Before I proceed, let me take a brief moment for the introduction of my organization. Dizzy Saksham is an initiative of SIMS Group, which has developed content for over 300 courses in multiple languages, which range from four hours to six months in various sector of IT, BFSI, retail, entrepreneurship for all the age group, from school children, youth, professional, and even the senior citizens. Dizzy Saksham has also conducted more than 150 webinars, 10 plus FDPs, and workshops, seven international conferences. Dizzy Saksham impacted more than 15,000 plus lives through various webinars, conferences, workshops, seminars across the globe. The topic for today's webinar is Future of Waste Management Turning Waste into Energy which is presented by Dr. Meenal Jan, ma'am. Future of waste management is one of the world's biggest challenge at that moment. To sum up waste management, future includes turning waste into energy, enabled practices, improvement in monitoring system, data collection, and much more technology-based advancement. Now, I profusely elated to take an opportunity to introduce our chief guest of the day, Mr. Meenal Jan. Mr. Meenal Jan, ma'am, is an assistant professor at the Department of Resource Management and Design Application, Lady Irving College, University of Delhi. Her area of specialization is environmental management and sustainable development. She is skilled in program evaluation, environmental awareness, and academic writing. She is gold medalist in PhD from University of Delhi. She has more than a decade of rich experience in teaching, training, and research. She has written for various national and international journals, book, magazines in the areas of renewable resource, energy, environment management, and green building. One of her research papers selected among the top 20 sponsored research paper globally in the Ajman Fourth International Environment Conference. The world is full of diamond and jam we are having here today to build this event. With this note, I would like to give my heartiest welcome to our chief guest, Mr. Meenal Jan Ma'am, with a big round of applause. Before going further, I request all the participants to remain mute throughout the webinar. And if you have any doubt, you can type in a chat box or you can also raise your hand. Ma'am, please take charge. Thank you so much, Kanika, for such a wonderful introduction. And I congratulate Dizzy Saksham for, you know, successfully organizing so many webinars and, you know, touching so many lives. <clears throat> so I congratulate all the organizers. And I welcome all the participants. As uh, Kanika said, I am Dr. Meenal Jain, and I uh, uh, belong to uh, Lady Avan College, University of Delhi. And uh, let me just uh, share my screen before I move forward. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah, is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am, your screen is visible. All right. So, you know, as Kanika said, uh, the, the uh, topic of today's webinar is uh, future of waste management and specifically turning waste into energy. Now, we all know that, you know, waste has become such a menace in today's world and it can be solid, it can be liquid, it can be gaseous waste. And each type of waste has different methods of disposal and management. And, uh, you know, the aim of waste management is to, is to, you know, basically reduce the dangerous effects of such waste on the environment and human health. So let me just begin with a brief introduction of what is waste. We all know what is waste, right? In our everyday lives, we generate so much of waste. 
and here i would like to strongly emphasize that you know the act of wasting and the word waste they are specifically human inventions if we look at our nature nature keeps on replenishing itself so even if nature is generating any waste in terms of the biodegradable waste that it is generating you know it has natural phenomena by which it keeps on replenishing itself but specific uh, specifically when we talk of waste it is uh, you know the act of human inventions we as humans have been contributing a lot to waste generation and you know we consider waste to be such a material which is useless or which has no value and we we think of waste of uh, as something which is just to be thrown away right and uh, as part of our existence we are generating a great deal of waste as by products of our everyday lifestyle so there are various types of waste like there is municipal waste the waste that is you know generated on a daily basis the municipal solid waste then we have industrial waste now you know we all know as part of urbanization and industrialization we we are you know uh, seeing a lot of uh, uh, increase in the industries that are being set up which includes manufacturing industries as well and when industries are set up they are definitely going to produce waste then we have hazardous waste right like your biomedical waste and uh, uh, now specifically we have come across a different kind of waste which is our ppe waste after you know uh, the pandemic hit us Uh, this is a new type of waste which is coming to picture so hazardous waste includes majorly your biomedical waste and radioactive waste then construction and demolition waste now you know we all know that uh, you know construction is an inherent part of our development and specifically if we talk of developing countries we are constructing at a rate like never before and you know studies have actually shown that uh, the number of buildings which will be there in 2030 uh, only half of them are present today so you can just imagine the kind and the amount of construction and demolition waste that we are going to generate mining waste another very very important category of waste you know uh, we do a lot of mining uh, whether whether it's coal mining or mineral mining so you know whenever we engage in such activities we are bound to generate a lot of waste <clears throat> then e waste uh, and uh, i think in 21st century e waste has rarely become a menace we use so many smartphones we use laptops you know so our our life is actually revolving around these gadgets and more the gadgets that we are using more electronic waste we are generating and it's very very difficult to manage such kinds of waste then packaging waste you know our lifestyle has drastically changed and we are spending so much on packaging just just uh, you know imagine a, a box delivered to you at your doorstep when you order something online have you ever thought of the the layers of packaging it includes it has so many layers of packaging starting with the outermost plastic layer to the innermost cardboard box that the product is placed into so so much of packaging waste we are generating in today's state then agriculture waste definitely when we do agriculture we indulge in agriculture activity some kind of waste is bound to be generated medical waste as i said and the radioactive waste so these are the different types of waste and there are many more like we have plastic waste we have metal we have paper waste so there are many many immense types of waste that are you know generated on a daily basis and these are a few of them that i have listed here now if we look at the global waste scenario you know uh, world bank has actually estimated that globally we are generating more than 2 billion tons of municipal solid waste every year and if we look at the average waste generation per day of per person per capita waste generation if we look it varies you know between 0.1 to anywhere between 4.5 kg so there is a huge variation of you know waste that we as a person we are generating on a daily basis 
and uh, this variation is because you know the the development in different countries at is at different levels so people in developed world are generating more uh, per capita waste per day than people in developing world however having said that you know even in developing world the 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 amount of waste that we are generating it is increasing steadily right and about 30 per, 33% of the waste that we are generating is not managed in an environmentally safe manner so you can just imagine the impact that this unmanaged waste is going to have on our environment and you know we are not stopping here world bank has estimated that with rapid population which is growing and rapid urbanization and industrialization which is happening <clears throat> this waste generation is further going to increase by about 73% from 2020 levels so 2020 may whatever waste that we were generating 73% of that added and it will reach to about 4 billion tons in the year 2050 so you know we are not stopping here we are just increasing the waste that we are generating on a daily basis and if we specifically talk of the low income or the developing countries over 90% of this waste is openly burned they are they are incinerated they are you know disposed of in unregulated pills or dumps and all these practices are creating serious health issues serious environmental issues you know because when the waste is poorly managed it is it is a breeding ground for uh, diseases so many uh, you know mosquitoes breed in uh, these these piles of waste and you know disease vectors are present which is also in a way contributing to global global climate change because when the waste is lying at a place over a period of time because of its degeneration it releases a lot of gases which is which are you know in turn leading to climate change and you know even though i said that the developed countries are the ones which are producing more of this waste but the impact is on the residents of the developing countries because we are not able to deal with the impacts of this waste step uh, especially the poor which are you know living in the urban areas they are more severely impacted by unsustainably managed waste that we are generating thus it is very essential that whatever waste that we are generating it is properly managed so that the cities that we are Uh, you know living in and the cities that we are going to build they are more sustainable they are more livable they are healthier for people who are you know occupying these cities so secondly i uh, would like to move on to what is waste management so so far i have uh, tried to throw light on what is waste and how much waste we as a world are you know sort of uh, generating on a daily basis and on an annual basis now we move on to how this waste can be managed so waste management is nothing but all the activities which are required to manage the waste that we are generating right from its inception to its disposal so when we create some waste we collect that waste we transport we treat it we dispose it all these steps together form the waste management activity Okay, and this includes the collection of waste, the transportation of waste, the treatment of waste, and the final disposal of waste. And you are also required to, you know, continuously monitor the waste management as per the rules and regulations, the legislations. For example, uh, um, I'll, I'll give you one example that you know, in Delhi, in India, we are not supposed to uh, openly burn the leaves. So that's something which is is legal to do in the in the capital city of india so when you are managing waste you also have to take care of these rules and regulations so that you are not overstepping uh, stepping the legislation so as i said waste management can be defined as the collection transportation disposal of garbage and it's not just the solid waste that we are generating 
it is also the sewage that we are generating the waste water okay so even management of that uh, becomes part of waste management and waste management is become a global concern why because i just share the data with you that you know we are generating mammoth amounts of waste on a daily basis so because we are generating so much of waste its management has also become a challenge for most of the countries around the world and you know uh, as the population is increasing the the consumption trends are changing so i gave you one example of online buying right it was not so prevalent uh, maybe 20 years back so as we are developing as we are evolving as a as a species our consumption patterns are also changing right and changes in our lifestyle they have posed such alarming threats to the environment because we are continuously increasing the amount of waste that we are generating and thus waste management has become so important and why uh, you know do we need to manage waste is also because if we do not manage this waste it usually ends up in unsanitary landfills or it will go in the water bodies which is not only you know uh, threatening to the human life but it is also very very dangerous for our marine life for our fishes for uh, you know the aquatic ecosystem so mismanagement of waste can actually cause water con contamination it can cause soil uh, pollution it can cause air pollution so all the types of pollutions waste contributes to and thus it is critical for all the countries all over the world to manage the waste in a sustainable manner <clears throat> so why waste management is important because when we manage our waste sustainably we are conserving our resources so see uh, a lot of times we see a uh, waste as something which is to be thrown away but you know the time has come when we start looking at waste as something which is of value to us which is of wealth to us and that is where waste to wealth concept comes right we can actually transform our waste to something which is of value to us so it is not something which is rubbish and garbage which is to be thrown away rather it is something which needs to be treated and made into something new which can be used so when we properly manage our waste we are conserving a lot of natural resources like we are conserving water we are conserving energy we are conserving raw materials and at the same time uh, when we reduce the amount of waste by proper management we also improve the health and safety of the people the occupational health and safety right so we are reducing the effect of waste on health of human lives on health of marine life on health of the animals and also on the environment so management of waste can actually help us reuse and recycle of Uh, valuable resources like paper cans glass metal these are you know very very valuable materials which are found in waste and when we manage the waste we can actually recycle and reuse these valuable materials instead of just throwing them away uh, another thing that waste management helps us is you know it it has a positive impact on our economy because a lot of jobs are created so when we are running an efficient waste management system we need a lot of uh, manpower and when we need that manpower we are actually creating jobs so in a way we are also positively adding to the economic well being of our nation right and if we talk of businesses organizations or corporates they can actually save money by the uh, by the recycling of products that they are producing so if they are generating a number of waste materials then they can recycle that waste material which can you know help them save money and uh, uh, it definitely helps in environmental sustainability because we are reducing the greenhouse gas emissions and we are also preserving the natural resources so in a nutshell if i tell you the benefits of waste management uh, it leads to better environment it definitely reduces pollution be it water pollution air pollution or soil pollution land pollution any kind of pollution 
it conserves energy right and definitely creates jobs it creates employment so it is it is uh, you know uh, if we if we understand it in the terms of sustainable development we know that sustainable development has three pillars economic pillar uh, environmental pillar and social pillar so when we are doing waste management we are contributing to each of these three pillars we are contributing to better environment we are improving the lives of people which is social development and we are contributing to economy which is economic social uh, economic sustainable development so when we are doing waste management we are actually contributing to sustainable development right so when we are doing waste management there are several things to be considered uh like what methods of disposal are we using are we recycling or not and you know before actually coming on to waste management we need to identify ways to actually reduce the generation of waste because if we uh, on the, on the first place we reduce the amount of waste that we are generating then we will have lesser waste that we need to manage right we'll have to we'll have lesser waste to be taken care of right so reduction methods waste reduction methods and transportation and uh, you know i would like to share that a lot of times we feel that it is only the responsibility of the government or the regulatory bodies to take care of waste or to manage our waste in a sustainable manner but it is not that it is the responsibility of each and every one of us to manage our waste properly to play our role in sustainable development and you know we can start by actually sorting our waste at our household levels can we not segregate biodegradable and non biodegradable at our level it will become so much easier for the regulatory bodies for the civic bodies to then treat it to you know take it to the next level so it is the responsibility of each one of us to indulge in the activity of waste management so having understood what is waste management and what are the benefits and uh, you know uh, what is the importance of waste management let me just uh, tell you briefly uh, the methods that can be used for waste management so there are several methods like uh, we have landfills we have incineration there is recycling uh, composting and waste to energy so i will be discussing uh, these methods uh, briefly and then i'll come on to the the uh, main topic of today's uh, webinar which is waste to energy which i'll be discussing in a little more detail so starting with landfills now all of us have seen landfills right and uh, you know when i was a child i uh, was told that these are mountains of garbage right and uh, if we if i shared the experience of uh, you know my childhood uh, being in delhi uh i saw a number of such mountains in my city and uh, the heights of these mountains are just increasing you know they are actually double the size uh, of what i saw them when i was a child so landfills are very very common sight in today's state in most of the urban cities wherein uh, you know it it uh, the the garbage is just dumped there and uh, sometimes uh, landfills act as a temporary storage so you know we collect the waste we transport the waste and we dispose the waste in these landfills wherein it's for the buried in the designated lands so as i said some landfills are used for temporary storage wherein uh, you know the waste is consolidated uh, at these landfill sites and then they are transferred further for uh, for the processing like sorting treatment recycling etc etc but if you just look at this picture are you not alarmed you know these landfill sites are such a menace they are a significant cause of health and environmental problems just imagine the situation of the people who are residing around these landfill sites you know so they are i would say they are not a very good method of waste disposal these are the issues with landfills starting with leachate so when you uh, you know leave uh, waste in a place for a long time and when rains come the the 
the toxic materials which are present in the waste it goes inside the ground and it gets mixed with the ground water and it just pollutes the ground water then decomposition gases so over a period of time uh, when you know uh, the waste that is dumped in landfills when it gets decomposed it emits a lot of gases like methane is one of them right and it these gases uh, ultimately go in the environment and they act as greenhouse gases which lead to global warming right then there are vectors vectors for a number of diseases like rats mosquitoes birds which are there which which you know act as carriers of diseases and definitely odor you cannot just pass by a landfill site it is so stinky right so these are some of the issues which are there for landfills then we have another method of waste management which is recycling now i'm sure all of us are familiar with the concept of recycling and recycling is a is nothing but converting our waste materials or used materials into new products or objects which can be used okay so when we recycle a product we are actually reducing the amount of waste that we are sending to landfills or incinerators so we are conserving our natural resources like wood water paper minerals because we are recycling them so instead of using a virgin material every time we are using a used material to produce something new right so these are the general steps that we follow in recycling we collect the waste material we process it and then we manufacture the new product and uh, the most commonly uh, recycled uh, waste material i would say is paper and the newspaper that we get in our houses every day they are actually uh, printed on a recycled paper right and uh, uh, the the uh, Uh, you know the the kabadi walas that come at our places what do they do they collect newspapers from us and then they give it off to recyclers so it is a very traditional practice but it has come up as a fancy word now that we need to recycle you know it's not something new it is something which we have been doing for so many years then composting another very important and very uh, you know easy to follow method something which can you know be done at household levels you and me we can do composting at our homes so it is the natural process wherein the organic material is decomposed into a humus rich soil okay and they they are basically acted upon by microorganisms like bacteria and fungi these are the microorganisms which break down the waste material into simpler forms right and the carbon which is present in the waste uh, that is used as an energy source by these microorganisms so these microorganisms act on the waste material and break it down into compost which is a very very good uh, uh, you know uh, manure for our plants then another method is incineration now i have kept incineration towards uh, you know a little later side of my presentation because it's closely related to waste to energy and uh, as the, uh, the the name suggests incineration is nothing but burning of your waste materials so jo aapke whatever substances which are there in your waste material when you combust them or when you burn them it is called incineration so you are giving a thermal treatment to your waste and as a by product you are generating ash you are generating gas you are generating heat and all the by products that you are generating they can be used for further uh, you know uh, applications and technologies uh, such as gasification pyrolysis these are used for incineration which i will be discussing a little later and then definitely waste to energy which uh, you know wherein we treat our waste in such a manner that we are creating some form of energy out of it now that energy can be in the form of electricity that can be in the form of fuel it can be in the form of heat so i out of these three if you are generating any form of energy by treating your waste that is nothing but waste to energy right and uh, you can <coughs> use different uh, types of waste to produce energy like you can use semi solid uh, 
based from affluent treatment plants. You can use liquid domestic sewage. Uh, you can use gaseous waste to, uh, you know, uh, produce energy. So different types of waste can be used for producing energy. So coming on to, uh, you know, different technologies for waste to energy. So right now, what I've discussed is what are the different methods of uh, waste management? Now, out of that, I'm going to focus more on the last one, which is waste to energy. And I'm, I'm going to briefly discuss, uh, uh, you know, what are the different technologies which we can use for converting this uh, waste into energy. So starting with biomethanation, I'm sure all of us have heard of uh, biogas. And uh, it is very commonly used in a lot of communities throughout the world. So it's nothing but biomethanation. And what happens is uh, the organic material which is present in waste, uh, it is anaerobically uh, digested and it is converted into biogas. So this process also involves uh, bacteria, microorganisms, and they act without the presence of oxygen. So they act in the absence of oxygen and they result in the formation of biogas, which contains uh, chiefly uh, methane and carbon dioxide. And this biogas can be used as a fuel. Now, this process has a dual benefit because, uh, you know, uh, when the waste is acted upon, it is converted to biogas. That is one. And secondly, the solid waste that is left behind is an excellent manure. It can be used for, uh, you know, uh, for our plants, for our agriculture systems, and it acts as an excellent manure. So, you know, it has a dual benefit of producing biogas as well as manure. Now, this process of biomethanation is also important because it can be, uh, you know, uh, easily installed in a decentralized manner. You are not required to uh, sort of connect to any grid or something. You can have a standalone biogas plant or biomethanation plant. Okay, so you... Uh, segregate your organic wet waste from uh, kitchen waste, canteen waste, uh, vegetable waste. You segregate the organic waste, which can be fed into these biogas plants. And then uh, under the action of uh, bacteria, biogas is produced. We can, uh, uh, you know, sort of. Uh, so these this biogas that is produced, it can be directly burned in gas boiler or you can use it for cooking. I have personally seen a lot of communities, you know, using this uh, biogas being produced, uh, you know, uh, they use it for cooking purposes. So it's working very well for them, right? And if we use this biomethanation process, uh, uh, about 20 to 25 kgs of cattle dung, which is, you know, so uh, uh, commonly available in rural areas where cattle is so common, it can generate one cubic meter of biogas and it, it can further produce two units of electricity. So just imagine the cattle dung, which we were considering waste, can produce so much of uh, energy, right? Another method uh, of uh, generating energy from waste is gasification. Now, gasification is basically uh, wherein uh, we... Uh, use very high temperatures uh, to the tune of you know even uh, 1800 degrees celsius and we use limited amounts of oxygen and the base material is uh, decomposed at such high temperatures and the result is a synthetic gas which we also call syngas okay so the final output of gasification process is a synthetic gas or a syngas which is a mixture of hydrogen and carbon monoxide, right? So, uh, you know, the waste like your biomass, your agriculture waste, and your segregated municipal solid waste, they are fed in the gasifier, and they are used to produce this syngas, which is further used. Uh, so the syngas that is being produced here, it can be further used to produce power, okay? Uh, then another very commonly used method is called pyrolysis, wherein, and again, we are using heat to break down the combustible materials in the absence of oxygen. Now, in gasification, what we were doing was we were using a little bit of oxygen, but in pyrolysis, we are not using oxygen. We are just breaking down the combustible materials uh, 
uh, present in the waste and we are uh, producing a mixture of combustible gases right and there are also some liquids and solid residues which can be further used for other purposes so the products that are uh, produced by the process of pyrolysis are a mixture of gas we have a liquid which is called a bio oil so it's it's a fuel that we can use and then we have a solid residue which is carbon black right so the gaseous mixture that we that is produced after pyrolysis which is the primary output it can be used in boilers to provide heat for further processes then there is also something called esterification wherein uh, you know uh, alcohol and acid react to form an ester and that is why the name of the process is called esterification this is a chemical conversion of waste to energy right and through uh, this process of esterification we can actually uh, uh, you know produce a number of biofuels from waste so it is very important to produce biofuels then fermentation you know just like we use fermentation in our kitchens to produce uh, to to make a lot of dishes uh, fermentation can also be used to produce electricity from waste so you know in this method we extract energy from the carbohydrate part of the waste and it is uh, acted in the absence of oxygen and when the carbohydrate uh, portion in the waste is acted upon it produces some chemical changes in the organic substrates and those enzymes convert these carbohydrates in the absence of oxygen to energy so you know these were some of the methods of uh, waste to energy and i will just quickly summarize what are the benefits of waste to energy so when we are using this waste as a resource when we are not throwing this waste in the dump sites we are actually reducing the waste which is going to landfills we are reducing the burden on landfill sites right secondly when we are not piling up our waste we are reducing the amount of greenhouse gases because as i told you earlier also if we just uh, you know uh, leave the waste to just lie down like that over a period of time it decomposes and it leads to production of greenhouse gases so when we are using this waste to produce electricity or to produce energy we are reducing the amount of greenhouse gases that will be generated right then we are reducing the use of fossil fuels now if we are producing biofuels using our uh, waste then we are definitely going to reduce our dependence on the traditional fossil fuels and as we all know fossil fuels are getting extinct so it's very important that we switch to greener sources of energy right then it's definitely environment friendly it is uh, reducing the uh, negative impacts of waste on environment right uh, it is definitely leading to creation of more jobs because uh, so much of manpower is required to uh, you know convert this waste into energy so we are leading to creation of jobs there is a better recovery of products and we are also balancing our ecological cycles there are so many nutrient cycles or ecological cycles which are present in our environment which waste is tend to be uh, you know disturbing it it tends to disturb those cycles and by utilizing that waste to convert into electricity or energy we are trying to balance those ecological cycles also uh coming on to the last part of my presentation i would like to share a brief case study with you and um, uh, subsequent to this discussion i have a very small video to share with you so first of all i'll share this case study with you and since i reside in delhi i thought i'll share uh, uh, a more local uh, case study with you so we have this landfill in delhi which is uh, called the gazipur landfill uh, landfill site and uh, this is an uncontrolled solid waste disposal facility because it receives about one third of the total garbage which is generated in delhi on a daily basis and it is operational since 1984 and it is the oldest functional landfill in the city you can just look at the picture and you can imagine the condition of this landfill right now <coughs> now various studies have estimated that you know at least 12 million tons of waste is currently present in these uh, in this landfill which includes sewage and construction rubble as well 
now since uh, you know this is an uncontrolled landfill site a lot of times the methane that is being generated from this garbage it is setting off random fires in the landfill and the toxic leachate which is uh, produced from this waste it flows into the groundwater and the groundwater in this area is severely polluted right and you know the landfill has crossed its limit way back about 20 years back the limit of this landfill site was reached but since we do not have an alternate site for dumping of our waste uh, we are continuing to use this as the uh, the, the landfill site so you know for for about a lakh Uh, you know residents we which are who are living in the radius of a kilometer of this dump site the the dangers are actually real they are constant they are constantly living in a state of uh, danger and hazards now what happened uh, in 2010 uh, there is this organization by the name of INNFS they developed a waste to energy plant under a, a ppp framework for east delhi municipal corporation and uh, it is estimated that this plant will uh, convert energy out of the waste coming to this landfill and it will uh, mitigate approximately 8.2 million tons of greenhouse gases that would have been generated from that plant had the waste not been treated right so the plant is built with a capacity of about 2000 tons per day and about 1300 tons of municipal solid waste is uh, treated on a daily basis to produce uh, clean energy or green power and uh, you know for the treatment of this waste also it is using recycled sewage water so it is fully a green method because it is uh, also using the water which is treated and not fresh water so it's fully complying with the uh, with the, the principles of waste management which are reduce reuse recover and recycle they also have a, a continuous emission monitoring system in the plant and they are keeping a tap on the working of the system uh, continuously and the facility has generated over 230 lakh units of clean electricity from more than 2.5 lakh tons of garbage and not just that it is also providing livelihoods to thousands of small businesses which are placed around this landfill site you know we have a a, a meat poultry market we have uh, one of the biggest flower markets around this area so all those small businesses have actually gotten livelihood from this plant right uh before i conclude my presentation i have a small video to uh, share with you it's about uh, some 8 to 9 minutes video uh let me just uh start that video and please let me know whether you can uh, hear the audio or not <laughs> yes ma'am Delhi a city that encompasses time dotted with monuments which remind us of our past the city is constantly on the move it's home to nearly 17 million people that seek a bright future but this hope comes at a price delhi generates over 10000 tons of municipal solid waste per day and what we do with it is just push it out of sight east delhi municipal corporation is one of the most thickly populated area of national capital territory of delhi and uh, we generate about uh, 3000 uh, metric tons of garbage daily it goes to slf site gazipur this site has saturated long back in 2002 uh, but because uh, Delhi being uh, constrained for land we do not have any option but to send our garbage there
there is a initiative taken by DMC wherein uh, with the private uh, sector cooperation we have set up an garbage to energy conversion plant at uh, Ghazipur with the help of ILFS environment the waste to energy plant at Ghazipur is a path breaking initiative that provides a scientific solution to address the dumping of waste at Ghazipur the plant has been set up by IL and FS Environment on a public-private partnership framework for the East Delhi Municipal Corporation. The waste to energy plant has the capability to process 2,000 tons per day and generate 12 megawatts of green power to address East Delhi's growing waste. This waste to energy plant at Gajipur is India's first showcase plant which is Euro compliant and having seven stage pre-processing facility. The municipal solid waste is delivered at the plant site by East Delhi Municipal Corporation trucks. The plant has an elaborate seven stage pre-processing facility that prepares the waste to ensure a high calorific value for the refuse derived fuel or RDF. The RDF has a calorific value of over 3000 kilocalories per kg thereby eliminating the need for any supplementary fuel. The state-of-the-art boiler is designed for combustion of 550 tons per day of RDF at a furnace temperature of 1100 degrees centigrade, thus eliminating carcinogenic dioxins and furons. The flue gas generated from the combustion of RDF is passed through the real-time gas cleaning system comprising semi-wet reactor and bag filter. Clean gases that are Euronorm compliant are discharged through the chimney. The plant has established high standards of transparency by providing real-time data on emissions, which are shared at site and online. The main steam generated from the boiler is supplied to the steam turbine to generate 12 megawatts of power at 11 kV. A part of the generated power is consumed in-house as captive consumption and the balance power is exported to DTL 220 by 66 kV Ghazipur substation. Delhi government is committed to promote renewable sources of energy. The Ghazipur plant is another step in that direction as it will not only treat solid municipal waste but also generate energy. Over the years, Ghazipur has become synonymous with incompatible land use. The area houses 80% of Delhi's meat trade, 70% of poultry trade and 95% of fish and flour trade. 7% of Delhi's milk supply is being supplied from the dairy farms located here. The catchment has become a vortex of high environmental risk. To address social and environmental concerns of the project, ILNFS supports an initiative, Gulmeher. It aims to provide alternate livelihoods for rack-picking families, in addition to providing jobs at the plant. Gulmeher also assists with functional literacy and financial inclusion. These efforts have transformed the lives of the community and provides a replicable model for rehabilitating rack pickers across dump sites in the country. With the completion of the Ghazipur Waste to Energy project, ILNFS Environment has successfully implemented an integrated solid waste management solution for Delhi's municipal solid waste, which also includes a composting facility at Okhla and construction and demolition waste management facilities at Burari and Shastri Park. ILNFS Environment manages the compost plant at Okhla. 200 metric tons of municipal solid waste is processed at the plant daily. The aerobic composting plant enjoys the unique distinction of being the first municipal composting plant in the world to be issued carbon credits. The waste is treated on covered windrows 
and then undergoes further mechanical sieving to give us high quality organic manure. This compost is sold for enhancing soil fertility for agriculture and to homes for kitchen gardening at over 350 mother dairy outlets. In a pioneering initiative of IL and FS Environment at Burari in North Delhi, 2,000 tons per day of construction and demolition waste is recycled to recover construction grade materials. The process primarily involves segregation, grinding and washing with recycled water. This effort has substantially reduced the circulation of particulate matter in our atmosphere and is a significant step in reducing the air pollution levels in Delhi. Our value-added line includes concrete making and a range of precast products such as pavers, tiles and curbstones. We at Island FS Environment are confident that we can take the integrated waste management model that we have established in Delhi to all our urban cities and take forward the Smart City and Swachh Bharat initiative. So, you know, this uh, video has very, very beautifully uh, showcased how this waste to energy plant has not only, uh, you know, helped Delhi uh, reduce the waste uh, which is being dumped in the Gazipur landfill site, but also how they have impacted the social lives of the people surrounding that area and how. You know, the, the children of rack pickers, they have been, uh, you know, included in these uh, education programs to improve their livelihood. So it's a very, very holistic program uh, contributing to all the three pillars of sustainable development. So uh, just to conclude my uh, presentation, I would say that the volume of waste that, uh, you know, is available to us for energy generation is huge. And we are not stopping here. The amount of waste that is generated is increasing on a daily basis. And if we not see that waste as waste, but as treasure, then, you know, we will be able to deal with this mammoth amount of waste, this mammoth problem that, you know, our generation is facing. And uh, when we produce energy from waste, it is also a part of a, the circular economy that we are moving towards we are uh, wherein we are you know sort of keeping the resources in the loop for as long as possible as opposed to linear economy wherein we just use the product once and throw it away so we are definitely moving towards a circular economy and with the uh, advances which are happening in the technology i'm sure that waste to energy plants will increasingly contribute to low carbon energy systems because they will also garbage uh, ca uh, you know capture carbon dioxide they will recover raw materials and then they will supply more energy to decarbonize other sectors so uh, this is uh, you know uh, what i wanted to share in the brief time that i was given i hope i have not overshot the time that was given to me and thank you so much Thank you so much, ma'am. It was really a very informative and incredible session. I would like to propose hearty vote of thanks to you, ma'am, for gracing today's webinar. Your presence and wise word help magnifying our cause in best possible ways. I hope all the participants learned a lot with this webinar. 
i would really like to thank you ma'am for giving us your valuable time and i'm also delighted to be a part of today's webinar thank you so um, much pleasure being here same ma'am today's question guys today's question will be take care in our upcoming live talk show a good events never end in a world they take only a pause and keep us awaiting for the next all good things eventually end i consider everyone as fortunate that they become a part of this webinar which was full of knowledge which make difficult to say goodbye i request everyone to please fill the feedback form which is provided in the chat box and you can fill the feedback form within 24 hours so which you all are able to get the e certificate within 15 working days remember don't forget to subscribe our youtube channel and attach the screenshot of the same in a feedback form as a proof and also tag us on instagram like hashtag busy saksham along with the screenshot in your story so kindly fill the form and everyone please switch on your cameras we need to take a screenshot everyone please switch on their cameras guys thank you so much for cooperating again thank you all for attending today's webinar and if you have additional question you can contact us by email or telephone we are happy to provide additional support to you the end of one chapter is the beginning of next keep on reading the best is yet to come i kanika gal your host for a day sign off on a cheerful note have a wonderful day thank you Thank you. Thanks for being here, everyone. I'm I'm so sorry for my throat. Actually, I'm just recovering from COVID. So, in case uh, you know there was any problem uh, uh, listening to me, I'm so sorry for that. And I hope to see you all again. And any questions that you might have, you can just share with the organizers, and I'll be happy to answer. Thanks a lot. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.